Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. So what is this all about today? Well, this is where my project started. I went shopping and I stopped into Maurice's to just check out what they had. It's one of my favorite clothing stores. And as I was checking out, I ran across this gift card. And for some reason, I looked at it and I went, oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. And it is beautiful. But the one thing that I noticed is this flower right here and this flower right here, those match a stamp set that we have. And it just caught my eye and I went, oh my gosh, I need one of those. And then I got to thinking, why would I need a gift card to Maurice's? Well, my daughter Haley has been busting her butt with school and two jobs right now, and I'm just so very proud of her. And I know she's under a lot of pressure. She's pretty stressed out, but she's holding it all together and working super hard to get her teaching license. So as I was looking at this thinking, I could design a card around that and give that to Haley as a way to go, darling. And then I saw these. Now, who could resist a little roll-on perfume that's got actual infused flowers in it? I know that I couldn't, and it kind of goes along with the card. And us stampers, we're kind of like this, aren't we? So that's where this whole project was born. Let me show you what I'm gonna make for you today. So here it is. Is this not the cutest thing ever? This is a gorgeous card and a little test tube holder. That's what we're calling this. Is it holds the little test tubes, but this little bottle of perfume is perfect, right? So I'm going to show you some tips on how I made my card come together. It's got a surprise on the inside that I'll keep for um, the video. And then also how to make this little test tube holder because I also made this. Now how cute is that? These are candy corns in this little test tube. And where the heck are those coming from? You can get a whole box of these. There's 12 of them in here. 12 little test tubes. They are plastic, so you don't have to worry about them breaking for $5. Hey! So this is what I came up with, and then I thought it would go great with my center step card that I made. And our promotion right now we have going on designer series paper. This uses a lot of the patterns in the Spooky Night designer series paper. I'm going to show you how to make this little box for these test tubes and how this card came together and the surprise on the inside. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you some tips on the card that I made. I've got an envelope because we have to stamp that up, right? Then I've got a whisper white layer for the inside that is four by five and a quarter. Another whisper white layer for the front of our card that is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. A basic black layer that is four by five and a quarter. And then I'm using Flirty Flamingo for my card base at five and a half by eight and a half. Now I've already folded this in half and I'm gonna burnish it with my bone folder. And start my assembly here. I always love the way that a black layer makes your card really pop. I'm going to bring in my Memento ink pad and a piercing mat to stamp on. And I'm going to make sure that I'm using the right layer for my front. This is the smaller one. The You Are Amazing comes in the All Things Thanks stamp set. This is a fabulous stamp set for thank you cards. It's just got a lot of really cool fonts. You guys know I'm a font person. And some really great greetings. I'm going to ink that up and I'm going to put that way down here in the bottom corner. Now I went about designing my card in a whole different way. 
So I have the gift card and the little bottle of perfume, and that's kind of the colors that I drew off of. So here's that gift card again. And I kind of pulled off of these colors to make the card. And what I did was I took a bunch of different colors and I stamped them with Versamark ink using the Falling Flowers stamp set. This is just a beautiful floral stamp set and I love this flourishing leaf viney thing that's in here because that's gonna be a gorgeous element for this card. Here's all my little elements that I use. So I've got some flirty flamingo, some crushed curry, some peekaboo peach, pear pizzazz, and rose red. And I just stamped up a bunch of the images on these various colors of cardstock with Versamark ink. And then I embossed them with white embossing powder and went about cutting them out with the matching Mayflowers framelits. And you get such an awesome selection in these framelits. I love, love, love this flower. Like that is my favorite one. The rest of them are beautiful too, but this is my favorite. So I cut out a black and a pool party with that one. And then you can see here that I just stamped and cut out several images. Now some of these, like this leaf for example, and these two flowers, these are not embossed. They're just cut out of the cardstock. They're just die cut. This is just a really different way for me to create a card. I went about it completely opposite from what I would normally do, which is figure out which images and figure out which colors. I just stamped up a whole bunch of items, embossed them, die cut them, and now I'm gonna go about creating my card, which I think was a lot of fun. So we're gonna put these aside for a minute, and I'm going to come in with this one. Because I have a black card base, I decided I wanted a little bit of black to go behind my pool party flower. So I'm going to figure out how to line this up. I think it lines up just like that. And then I'm going to offset it just a little bit. So you guys have seen me do this with the glue before. When you're using these really intricate dies, it's easier to use a little sponge and put your glue on the paper, or I'm sorry, put your glue on a plate just like this. And then I'm going to add some glue to the back of my flower. This is a lot better than having glue squirting out all over the place, don't you think? Now I'm just gonna offset this a little bit so you can see that black behind my pool party flower. Here, it looks better on that paper. Just a tiny smidge. I think that's gonna be a really cool element. And now I'm ready to build my floral part of my card. So I'm going to first start with my biggest element and add some glue to the back there and I'm gonna put that right here. Now I get to decide what else to put on here. So I'm gonna get out my dimensionals and I'm gonna start tucking things in here. You guys know that I always like to kind of give things a dry fit. Let's try this and this. And then we're gonna come in maybe right down here. I want enough of this flower to be sticking out. Let's bring this in and maybe tuck it right under there. I'm gonna come in with this flower. I'm gonna make that cover up bottom of that blue. And I love these little crushed curry pieces. Oops, stick that right in there like that. And then maybe one of these little yellow flowers right down here. And I think this looks really good. So we're gonna go about gluing these down now. Got that there. Here comes our leaf. I love these die cuts. This is just so pretty and I just thought this was such a cute card to make for my daughter because she's been working so hard with college and she's got two jobs right now. She's working for 
as an autistic counselor, and that's been very new for her and challenging. She does love it. She said she really likes the challenge of that. And then she's been working at the Y in the daycare, taking care of babies, which has been really cool for her too. Got one more here. Oh, that has glue on it. I just need to let it dry. Whoops. Then I'm gonna pop this one up on dimensionals. So I think she's just gonna love this. She loves all these bright, pretty colors. We'll do that there. And do I dare, how about one of these yellow ones in the middle there? I don't know, I think that looks cute. Should we put it on a dimensional? I love dimensionals, don't you? Just do that, pop, pop, pop. And then we need one more little flower down here by the words. Should I put it here or over here? I think right here. So what do you think? Is that pretty? I think it's beautiful. Now, I'm going to bring back in my card base and we are going to get this glued together. See that little bit of black behind there just really makes your cards pop. One more thing I need. Let's get some rhinestones on there. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, right? And I'm just gonna sprinkle some of these around. How about we put one little one right in the center here. And I was walking around the other day and I felt something on my fingernail. I'm like, what, what is that? Here it was a black rhinestone stuck right to my fingernail. That was kind of funny. You guys ever walk around and get dimensionals all over the place? Like they're stuck to your socks and then pretty soon they're in another room. All right, I think that looks fabulous. And then this is our inside layer. So I'm gonna come in here and use my pool party ink and this great big flourish that I love. I'm just gonna stamp that right down here on the edge. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. And as long as we've got this out, this is what I wanted to use for my envelope too. Just like that. Beautiful. Okay, let's finish our card up. Can't wait to give this to her. She's gonna be so surprised. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now what am I gonna do with all these little elements that I have left over here? I am going to put them back in this stamp case. Of course, all my stamps will be in here when I get this mess cleaned up. But I'm just gonna set them back in here and I might be able to use them on another project. So I think that was a really, really interesting way to go about making a card, for me anyways, because I'm used to planning everything out ahead of time. And this time I kind of did it on the fly and I just cut, die cut and embossed a whole bunch of different elements and added them to my card front. I love this. And it does go along with the gift card, right? All right, so on to our next project, which is a holder for this perfume. And can you see those flowers in there? This is the cutest thing ever. It says, blossom infused with real flowers. And I got this at Marisa's. I think she's just gonna love this. It's so Haley, bright colors, fun. So to make my perfume holder, I've got a piece of Flirty Flamingo. This is four by 11. And I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer here. And I'm gonna score this at one and a quarter and two and three quarters. But I like to go this way on that first score line, so that's what I'm gonna do. It's up to one and a quarter. I'm gonna score that. Now I'm gonna turn it around and go to two and three quarters. Then we are going to start at a half an inch. And again, I like to run mine backwards here. So I've got it at a half an inch. And then I'll turn it around 
and go to one and three quarters, four and a quarter, five and a half, and then we're gonna do one more score line, but we're not gonna go all the way through. We're gonna go down to eight inches, so my paper is down to eight inches, and now you're just gonna score from the edge to this first score line and from the bottom to that score line. We don't want to score this middle panel. Just like that, and just like that. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. So that's what we have. This is super easy. It's not a hard project to make. And now I'm gonna come in, and I am going to cut on these score lines on the side of my project. And you guys know I like to cut out a little sliver when you're gonna have tabs that fold in. Just really helps your boxes fold better. You don't have those edges sticking out that are not real attractive. I've got another one of these tube holders that I made for Halloween that I will show you when I get done showing you how to make it. I'll show you one that I decorated up. It's really cute and it has candy in it. It uses our treat holders that look like test tubes. And remember, anything that's a tab, I forgot to do these over here, is going to get a diagonal cut on it. Oh, and this long piece right here where we did not score in the middle, we're going to cut that right off also. So I've got my big scissors here because I can just cut a nicer line with that. All right, I'm going to do the other side, and I'll be right back. Okay, now that we have this done, you can see the layout here. Let me turn this around. And if you want to freeze your video, this has all the dimensions on it and shows all the score lines. But this is what we've got. The next thing we're gonna do is I've got a three quarter inch circle punch here. And then I've punched out um, a circle out of a scrap of paper. Here's what I found works really good. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of snail adhesive so that this is a little sticky. And because when you put in your punch, you can't really see where you're going, you're just estimating, I'm gonna put this right here in the middle of my square on the end with this little tab and that's how I'm gonna know that I have this perfectly centered to punch out the hole for my little tube. So, great idea, right? And now we're gonna just burnish all these score lines and get everything ready for assembly. Don't forget, there's no score line there, so we're not gonna not gonna fold that over. I think that there are a ton of different ideas you can use with this little test tube holder. How about baby showers, bridal showers, um, any type, Easter, Valentine's Day, I can't wait to make more of these Christmas. Super, super cute. Okay, so here's what we have, and now you're just gonna Kind of fold it up. I pulled these tabs in, put the back around, these side tabs around, and I like to pull these two tabs right here in, and this is gonna fold right up however you would like it to fold up, just so that it looks nice. And here's our super cute little box. So I'm gonna use my liquid glue to glue this together. I'm going to put some glue on the inside tabs here. And remember, less is better. And we're going to fold this up just like that. And then you're going to need some glue right here and right here. And then on these side panels. Don't use too much. It'll dry faster if you use less glue. Okay. 
I'm putting the top piece down in here. Oh, let's get one right here too. A little bit of glue there. You'll be able to see where you need glue when you start making this. Okay. Push this down so it's all nice and squared up. Super easy, goes together fabulous. There we go. Now, how are we going to decorate it? Let me show you how easy that is. I took some pieces here, and I'll tell you how big these are. The um, This front piece right here goes on the front of our box. That is two and a quarter by one and a quarter. You've got the two pieces for the sides that are two and a quarter by one. I pushed these together and I stamped them using that Falling Flowers stamp set in um, Crushed Curry, Pear Pizzazz, Flirty Flamingo, and Peekaboo Peach. So that's how I did that. So I cut them first and then pushed them together and stamped them. So I thought that would be cool. This piece right here is for our back and this piece is three inches by one and a quarter. And now I'm just going to glue all of these on. Oops, I wanna make sure that I'm keeping these. I wanted them to look that, like they were one piece of cardstock that I just cut apart. So I'm gonna keep the flowers all kind of going the same way. Once I get this together, I don't know if it's really gonna matter. But that was my idea, so I'm sticking with it. And then this piece, You could find some really pretty colored little candies for the treat tubes to put in a box like this too. Like maybe Skittles. Skittles have the um, tropical ones, I think. They would work. And I need to have this one going this way. So like I said, I don't know if it matters, but it mattered to me. And it looks like I screwed it up anyways. <laughs> because I think this piece should have been turned around, but whatever. If you do this, you make sure you do it right. I'm not gonna peel that off of there now. And then here comes our back panel. I'm gonna push that in just a little bit there so it's kinda, make sure you don't put too much glue on there so you can actually push it in because mine's giving me a little problem here. Okay, I just kinda forced it. Well, you guys, you guys can benefit from my mistakes. There we go. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? All right, so what else am I gonna do here? I think out of all the colors that I have of ribbons and twines, I think I'm gonna go with the white here. And I think I'm just going to tie a really cute bow on here. Wrap it around a bunch of times. Kind of hard to. Remember to tie your baker's twine in a knot first because then your bow will stay nice and tight and you don't have to worry about messing with it. I love that tip. All right, so I brought in my little tabs for everything, and I like it because it has tiny little words in it. So I've got a little love here, and I'm gonna see, yep, that fits right inside this half inch circle punch. And then I've got my three quarters inch circle punch, and I'll punch out a little flirty flamingo. Oh, that's going to be cute. I think I'm going to like it. I just needed one more little element here for my treat holder, which is a perfume holder in this case. And then we'll do a dimensional on the back of that. And I'm going to add that right up. Oh, that was exactly what this needed add that right here and pull my baker's twine down a little bit. Let's get this covered up before I drop my project in it. See, I just stuck my finger in there. Oops, and I did it again. 
This is a neat little stamp set for all these tiny little elements that you might like. And let's see, it goes along with a punch called the circle tab. So you've got all these little things that you can put on um, a circle tab and use as elements in your scrapbook pages or on your cards. But I think that's the perfect little embellishment that I needed. And I will cut this off. You guys know that I love to curl the ends of my baker's twine. Oops, do just a little bit of that. Gotta hang on to it good when you do that. And here is our finished product. Got this adorable card, this cute little perfume holder, Oh, I forgot. So we've got one more element to do. I have this beautiful gift card and I would like this to go right inside here. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of our vellum card stock. I cut it at four and a half by two and three quarters because I want to make a pocket for my gift card holder. So I'm going to go around the three sides and I'm going to score it at a half an inch on three of the sides. Well, actually, I'm going to do it on four of the sides, I think. I'm just winging this. I have no clue what I'm doing here. So see, this is going to be the perfect little pocket, but it's a little tall. I'd like this to stick out a little bit. So let's fold this and see what this would look like. Yep, I want a little folded edge on the front. So I'm going to actually do all four sides scored at a half an inch. Let me show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do this. I folded this front one towards me. Now these others are going to be my pocket. So I'm folding them back. This didn't come in there very good. So I'm just creating a little pocket for my gift card to go in and I'm gonna cut. You see how this is sticking out here a little bit? Things like that make me crazy. So I'm just gonna trim up these edges. Again, you know, just like we did the box, you cut them at a little slant, they'll work better for you. This is gonna make the pocket Oh my gosh, isn't that cute? I have one more thing in mind for this. So how are we gonna stick this in here? Glue doesn't work really good on vellum because it's a non-porous surface. So I'm going to use mini glue dots. I'm just gonna leave my gift card in here. And my daughter has been working her little butt off. And I think she deserves a little treat. So I bought her a gift card to Marisa's. I know, everybody wants me to be their mom. Ain't happening, people. Got my hands full. Okay, one more cute little idea. Let's take one of these flowers that we already have ready and add that right to our little pocket. Did you see where I put the mini glue dots? Here they are. I'm going to add that right here. Go right there like that. Super, super stinking cute. Isn't that just adorable? There we go. Here's my little gift set. So tomorrow when Haley comes to pick up her cat, Opal, I will be able to give this to her and make her day fabulous because I'm sure she's going to be so excited. All right, you guys. I used Falling Flowers with the Mayflower Framelits, awesome, awesome set. I also use the All Things Thanks. This is a great thank you greeting set. And then I got the little love from the tabs for everything. It also has a matching punch. I think you can buy this set in a bundle, so that's cool. And now I'm gonna bring in this little cutie. 
This is our treat test tubes. They are shown on page 52. You get 12 plastic tubes for $5. These are super cute. There's a gazillion ideas out there. Oh, and don't forget, designer series paper. This is the spooky cat bundle, by the way, and I thought this would go really nice with the center step card that I made. Isn't that fun? I'll show you um, a link on my blog. You can find a link to the video for making this. But this is how I made the treat holder here with the candy corn in it. And don't forget that our designer series paper is on special right now. You buy three packs of designer series paper, you get one free. So that's awesome. But here's the stamp set that I used for the Halloween. And what a cute little project. This would be awesome to give to coworkers, neighbors, um, kids, grandkids, adult kids. They're going to love this too. So here's two different ideas making the tube holder in two totally different themes. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm wishing you a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much for joining me. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd be happy to send you our holiday mini catalog and the big catalog if you don't have one. You can pop me an email at kelly at a stamp above .com. I will have all dimensions and photos and links to these products if you um, need to purchase them on my blog, www.astampabove.com. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.